right, movers and shakers, it is time for another round of Emmett's Blackboard. First off, I'd like to apologize, I've been really busy the last couple of weeks, or the last six weeks or so, so I haven't had a chance to put a video, so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna make a little special video just for you guys on something I guarantee if you're watching these videos you have done or are doing currently. Today, we are gonna dissect the dish position. Now, the dish position, as you know, is a body line drill. It can be trained for endurance, it can be trained for strength, it can be trained just as part of a warm-up or can be trained as a full unique movement in your workout itself that depends on where you're at, where you're looking to go, how you're using it and what sort of training cycle you're in. I'm not going to go too much into that because it's quite person specific. Some good recommendations I find with the dish is you'd like to be able to hold about 90 seconds. There's a nice target on that. If you can hold that comfortably, you're kind of sorted on that. Other recommendations is three to four sets of 60 seconds. Once you can do that, you want to start looking at harder body line drills. You want to look at adding weights, maybe having weights on the ankles, weights held above the head on a stick, different things. First things first, let's just look at what the actual dish position is. Now, I teach this slightly different than what you might have been told, but we are going to start our feet, as I normally teach it, and work our way up. So, the feet, first things first, pointed. We have our toes pointed nice and flat, straight. The next thing, working our way up from here, so ankles, toes in line. If your point is a problem, you might need to do some release on your tibialis anterior. You can either roll this, Graston style technique, fascial abrasion technique is great for that area. Next, knees. Important one here is we want to pull our kneecaps up. So this has the indirect version of straightening our feet out and straightening our line out. We also want to look at terminal knee extension. If you cannot get your knee straight, fully straight, then you need to look at doing something to loosen that up. There's some loads of videos on that. Next, moving up. So we've got our quads tight, our legs. Our legs are squeezed together. Now this is a very important point. I had this illustrated last year. I was chatting to some guys on Reddit and one of the guys posted a picture and then I said, okay, your hands sounds nice, but let's squeeze your legs together and turn them out slightly. And he went from a 15 second handstand to a 30 second handstand. So little tip, very important. Squeeze your legs together. It fires your core off in an indirect way and just works. Trust me on this one. Next with the pelvis. This is where our legs, if you see, have lifted here. Our feet are lifted off the ground, but they're not lifted a huge amount. We're not going to be, it's not six, seven, eight inches, nine, twelve, as we see with people. In fact, I don't like that because it starts using the hip flex to lift the legs and we're not getting the effect we want. So our pelvis is tucked under the whole putting your balls on a table if you're a guy or your imaginary balls if you're a girl. Now, this will have the indirect effect of flattening out the lower back. Now, you always get people say, flat lower back, flat lower back. If you are a girl and working out in any way or just have normal woman-shaped hips, your lower back is going to be flattened out. But a lot of the time, I can still slide my hand underneath my clients because they're just developed in the posterior. It's just the way women are shaped. So I wouldn't get hung up on getting the back flattened. As long as the curve is out of the spine and the joints are flexed, perfectly fine. You're going to just put yourself in a bad position trying to flatten that out unless you're very narrow through the hips. Most guys can get the back flat. Myself, I squat a lot. I don't go perfectly flat to the floor. In fact, when I did, I'm forcing that one, fucked up my handstand shape for quite a while until I was able to re-establish a nice straight flattened spine. Next, so we've got this flattened, got this, our lift has happened. So this is going to have the indirect effect of lifting our legs probably about five centimeters off the ground. It's not a lot, but it's just what we need to be nicely in line. So we're looking for, in a handstand, this is what I'm directing this all towards, is we need a nice straight shape. We don't need to be arched like a canoe. We want to be flat. Everything stacks up nicely. Balance is carried by the bones. Simple. Next, we're looking at getting the ribs down. Now, when we pull the ribs down, we're going to have the indirect effect of lifting the top of the torso. Now, a lot of people cue this wrong. They lift the torso and they hollow over, and a hollow position has is a different position. The two distinct positions will have different applications. We must remember this. A hollow and a dish that I look same are not same. Remember that, that's important. So, we're gonna pull the ribs down. This is a small motion. We're only gonna get five to 10 degrees of flexion. 
that's going to have the effect that if we think the scapula is somewhere around this point here, it's going to have the effect that you're only going to lift up till you're at the point of the scapula, that pointy bit of the ground, that is all you need to keep the ribs down. We don't need to lift till our torso is right up like we're doing a crunch or a sit up. There's a lot of problems, you see. When you're initially starting your training, you want to lift up a bit higher just because law of the lever, longer lever, harder to hold, more muscular strength. But you want to look at just getting that slightly off the ground. Now, one of the other mistakes I see a lot in dish is in the neck. We want to keep the neck neutral. That means the neck follows the eyes. So if you're looking down to see your toes, you're going to be firing your this way, which we don't want. We want to be nice and long. So look straight up to the ceiling, but at the same time, don't crane your neck forward. Just nicely, if we fixed it, and then we lift it, boom, sorted. Now, the hands is a tricky one because we use the hands, well, I use the hands in my programming, as the intensification modifier. Once people have achieved, first we're gonna start with our hands going along the body here. Now, watch out, I don't want you holding your hands in my side, but having them abducted slightly out to the side is a great place to start. Then once that gets easy, we're lifted. Once that, the next thing we can look at is holding the hands straight up. So I'm grab my chuck. So we just hold the hands straight to the ceiling, pushing them up. Pushing them up. That's our next thing. You'll find that's a big kickoff. Another option I like to do is to hold the hands in the 90-90 position up by the side. You can round forward like that. Don't ask me why, I just like it. It's not a big deal, but up that, it's about the same amount of relative intensity. Next, once we've achieved our three to four sets of 60 seconds with ease, remember we're trying to do this as easy as possible, not struggling. We want this as body line. It's not deadlifting. So next, we're gonna hold the hands up by the ears. Now, the problem is you might want your friend or your coach to watch this. A lot of people will hold their hands where they think by their ears, but they're actually there. We're going to get them right back. So you're going to be pushing them away as well, making them nice and long. Same time, round it over. This will greatly intensify, intensify the leverage you have on your abs and make it a lot harder. You can also just look at this, this segment here as an isolated section. So we can just put our arms here. Then we can just pull down our ribs and see if everything moves as a unit, not worrying about the legs for a moment. That's just one test just to see if you actually have the upper abdominal strength. And I know the abs aren't divided, but for intents and purposes of this, it's that pulling the ribs down has a different effect as to rotating the pelvis. So, our quick recap. Toes pointed, legs squeezed together, externally rotated slightly, glutes squeezed, mildly, you want to be, basically, it's that hole, stick a $20 or 20 euro note between your ass cheek, you want to have a good hold on it. You don't want to be sucking it in there, but you want to be able to not have someone pull it out. Pelvis, lower back, rotated, a very small rotation to get those legs off the ground. Lower back flat, doesn't mean flat into the ground, because depending on your anatomy, that just won't happen. Next, ribs down, lifted, to upper body lifted, not extensively, just to the bottom of the shoulder blades. Bottom of the shoulder blades, fine. Arms, initially, we're gonna start arms down by the side, level one. Once we've achieved that, level two, arms up to the ceiling. Next, arms overhead, overhead, parallel to the floor, in line with the body. So our ultimate goal, once we have achieved this, we start looking at harder body line drills. But for you guys, give it a go. Most important thing, I'm gonna stress this again, getting those legs squeezed together, getting them rotated. That will add seconds to your handstands instantly. Trust me on this one. So, I hope you enjoyed my mini little lecture. The next video I have coming up is a video on joint preparation. We're gonna look at what exactly is joint preparation, what exercises and what sort of concepts can we use to apply to our training that will enhance our joints, and just answer some questions. Also, if you have any other further questions, I'm now taking questions for some more lectures. Either put them in the comments, put them on Reddit, send them an email, send them on Facebook, however you want, and I'll take a look at it. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe, and I will catch you next week.